Hi guys! In this video, you will learn how to implement a fine-tuning pipeline for open source LLMs using Python and serverless, which means no infrastructure to manage. We will go over the code implementation that our master chef, Paul Justin, has prepared. Oh man, that chicken looks tasty. Anyway, let's get our hands dirty. So the first thing we do is we go to the GitHub repository, which I'm doing right now. Here I'm going to fetch the URL right here. Then I'm going to go to my terminal. And then I'm going to go into my source folder. I'm going to create a new folder called live session. And then I'm going to get the code. The folder is there, so I'm just going to cd into it. And then I'm going to start Visual Studio Code. Feel free to use whatever editor you prefer. Now, the module that we're going to focus on this lesson is a training pipeline. So if you go here on modules, it's a training pipeline. Here I'm going to check first the readme that Paul Justin has prepared. It's a really clear readme, so you can first go through the installation. So as you can see, we need three tools. One of them is Python, which I suppose you have on your system. If you don't have, you can get it uh, uh, for free. You can use a tool like PyVM if you want to manage different Python versions, or even Conda, which honestly is not my preferred choice, but a lot of people use it. And then we're going to use Python Poetry. But what is Python Poetry and why do we use it? Poetry is a virtual environment manager for Python that helps you separate your system dependencies from your project's dependencies. This is extremely useful when you want to install the same package with different versions, so there are no clashes. Super. So if you don't have Poetry, it's super simple. You just go to Python Poetry. Right here. And you go to the documentation, installation. Here you can find instructions both for uh, Linux, Mac OS, and Windows, everything. So you just basically copy this command. You go to your terminal and you can run it. I'm not going to do it because I have already Poetry in my system, but you have to do it if you haven't installed it yet. And once you have done this, uh, now you can run the first command and make install. So to do that, I'm going to open a terminal inside Visual Studio Code right here. And then I'm going to cd into modules, training pipeline. And then I'm going to run make install. Now make install is using this make file here, which I'm going to open to the side. Make file is a very convenient tool if you want to basically help people run specific things, complex commands in a very uh, human readable way, right? So here, as you can see, all has packaged First, the activation of the right Python version, in this case 3.10. Sorry, right after that, the poetry install command, which installs all the dependencies that we have in the iproject.tom file. And then run pip install torch, just to make sure that we have torch 2.0. So now the command has run. I have make install. I'm going to clear my terminal. Now I'm going to go to the next step, which is make install dev. OK, this, uh, this command is necessary if you plan to develop on the project, right? So it's going to install the development dependencies, which if you go to the pypoetry.tom file, basically right here are notebooks or Jupyter notebooks, RAF, it's a Rust-based tool for uh, linting, and then Black for code formatting. So these are two tools that are important if you plan to uh, develop in Teams, right? So uh, what is exactly uh, code linting and formatting? Linting checks if your code follows PEPL conventions and formatting standardize your coding style. Both have the end goal of writing clean and maintainable code and are extremely useful when working in teams. Super. So now if you can, you can run make uh, install dev. I'm going to run it right here. Super. And now finally, I'll need to create a, a file with credentials, right? This file is secret. This file is not, and you should never commit it to GitHub. So here, Paul has provided an example in this .m.example, which I'm going to open here. And here you see placeholder. So what we need to do is we need to copy and rename it, call it .m file, which I'm going to do here. The file is here. And now we need to replace. These are secrets that basically help our code connect to Comet. Right? Comet is our metadata store. It's the place where we're going to lock uh, experiment runs for the fine tuning and also the final model artifact on the model registry. But what is a model registry and what do we need it? 
The model registry is a place where you aggregate, share, and version all your models. This is extremely useful in decoupling your system components, such as the training pipeline and the inference pipeline. So you can share the model between these two using the model registry. Super, so let's go to Comet. I'm gonna go to my Comet ML account, which I'm locked in right here. And here, I already created this project, but if you haven't done it, you will need to create a project. I called it hands-on LLM, but feel free to call it whatever name you prefer. So Paulescu is my workspace name, and hands-on LLM is my project name. So these are the two values that I'm going to put right here. So workspace is going to be Paulescu, and project name is going to be hands-on LLMs. Now finally, the API key. The API key, if you go back to Comet ML dashboard, you click here on the account settings, and API keys. Here you can copy it. So you copy this value. I'm going to paste it here. And I'm going to basically, I'm going to blur the screen because this is a secret. This is a value you should not share. Right? If you give this value away, you allow anyone to basically use your Comet ML service. So once you have saved these uh, values in the .m file, you can save the file. And let's continue. And that's it, right? The next section talks about how to set up Beam. But before setting Beam, which is a remote execution environment, we're going to try to run the code locally. So we're going to skip this part regarding Bing, and we're going to try to run it locally. For that, we're going to use the make dev train local. Let me check on the make file what's that. Dev train local. So what we do here is we poetry run. Okay, this is just a prefix that we, uh, that we need to add to say, don't use our system-wide Python, but use our virtual environment that we created with poetry installed. And then we run the Python, and then we run the script which is located at tools.trainrun. So I'm going to go right there under tools, train run. I'm going to put it here on the side. And actually, yeah. So here is the app. Here's the train function, which is basically pulling up a logger, checking availability of GPUs, and then setting up this training API, which Paul very nicely wrapped up. But where is this training API? I'm going to click right here, is this class. Class training API, which basically takes in data set path, model ID, and then training argument, because fine tuning depends on a lot of hyperparameters that we need to somehow set. And this is all about loading from configurations, but the key function right here is the dot train file right here. Here we define what's called a trainer. And for that, we use the hanging face library, uh, TRL train, TRL uh, training. So this is a very uh, it's a recent library uh, that hanging face has published which under the hood uses transformers, obviously, but then wraps up very nicely all the steps necessary to fine tune large language models. So basically, uh, it has a very clean API. You just need to pass the model. So a way to load your base model, the, ones, the one you want to fine tune, the training data set that is going to use to adjust all the parameters, the evaluation data set that is going to use to double check that what you're doing actually improves the model performance, and then the hyperparameters in this EFT, parameter efficient fine tuning configuration. And there are extra parameters that you always need to pass when you use the large language models, uh, in particular, match sequence length and also the tokenizer, which is very important. So now running this, this is what's going to pull our fine tuning. So let's try it. I'm going to go to the make file and then I'm going to run the make dev train local. Oops, I got an error. Yeah, developing with large language models is no happy path. So guess what? In this case, the error that I get is basically telling me that I don't have a CUDA device. So if you don't have a GPU, or if you have, for example, an Apple M1 or M2 chips, which are not CUDA supported, the script is not going to run. And the reason is uh, that Transformers, the underlying library behind the fine tuning, does not currently offer much support outside CUDA. So if you don't have a GPU, I'm sorry, you cannot run this thing on your computer. Or you have a MacBook with M1 or M2 processor, that's my case. I cannot run it either. So yeah, that's a bummer. But this is precisely where serverless computing really helps you get unstuck and move forward fast. So if you don't have a GPU, well, let's rent it. And we're going to use Beam for that. So it's going to be an on-demand compute engine, which obviously is going to support CUDA. So we're going to be able to run this thing. So I'm going to go to the instructions to run this thing on Beam. So if I go back to the readme, Using Bing, I need to dev train Bing. But before training on Bing, I need to 
what is called upload my data set, which is now on GitHub, also on my computer. I need to load it as a volume on BIM. But let me go to the BIM dashboard to explain it better. That's fine. So I go to BIM. Yeah, here's my BIM account. If you haven't uh, created one, you can create one for free and you get 10 hours of computing. After that, you are paid by usage per second. Uh, so, as I said, I need to create what's called a volume. That's a place, it's a highly available storage for our Beam application to access the data. So, I'm going to go to volumes here on the left, and then I'm going to create a volume. I'm going to call it QA dataset. It's a shared volume. Yeah, that's not really important here. I'm going to create the volume. Super. Once I have the volume, I'm going to go back to the README that our master chef has really well explained and then i'm going to run the command make upload data set to beam which if you go to the make file here on the right is basically using the beam sdk so yes if you haven't done that yet you need to also install the beam sdk how do you do that very simple you go to the beam page so beam.cloud and then on get started here on the docs you will find under installation you will need to install the Beam SDK. And for that, you just need to type this command. So you can copy it right here. You go to your terminal and you can run it. I'm not going to run it because I already have Beam installed on my system, but you need to run it so you can actually communicate with uh, the Beam service. After installing the Beam SDK, you also need to run the Beam configure command, which is explained a little bit below. Yes. And to configure, you need to pass your client ID and API secret. These are two values you can get from your Beam dashboard. So if you go to settings here under API keys, you can get your client ID by copying it here and your client secret. These are the two values that you need to uh, input when you run Beam configure on your terminal so uh, your Beam SDK can talk to your account on Beam. So once you finish setting up Beam, let me head back to the code. We're going to run the make upload data set to Beam, which under the hood is calling Beam volume upload. So I'm going to go to the make file and then I'm going to run the command make upload data set to Beam. And with this command, we are taking the data that we have locally on our system under data set, testing data, and training data, and we're putting that on our volume. So we head back to the dashboard on Beam, click on volumes. There, I'm going to see. My volume, QA dataset, and inside I'm going to see the dataset folder with the two JSON files for training and testing. So now we are set. Now we should be able to actually run this job on Beam. So let me check what's the command dev train local. No, that's something that I ran already. Dev train Beam. So dev train Beam is calling the train QA dot train function. So let me go to the tools again, train run. Yeah, this is. Let me actually shut down this window and let me focus on this file. So to run an app on Beam is very easy. You need to provide a function, a Python function that implements your training, and you need to wrap it with a decorator. This decorator provides app information. That is basically what's the hardware you want to use to run this Python uh, workload, this Python function. To do that, you use the Beam app object. And there you pass the name of your app. That's the name of the Beam app you will see on the dashboard. And then the runtime information. Precisely how many CPUs, how much memory, how many GPUs, and also the image version. So which Python version, 3.10 in our case, and also the requirements that we generated from our poetry environment. Now, the question is, how do you decide on these parameters? Right? What's the hardware you need to pick to run this thing on Beam? When choosing the right Beam runtime configuration, the most critical aspect is to understand your compute minimal requirements, such as in CPU, memory, and VRAM. Afterward, it's a trade-off between cost and latency. You want to minimize the cost while preserving the latency of your use case. Super, so we are good to go. I'm going to take the dev train, and I'm going to run it. Super, now let's try to run it on Beam. And as you see, it's doing a lot of uh, things on the back end. So basically, um, pulling out the resources so you can run this app. It's synchronizing files, and then this script is going to run. How it's going to run? It's going to implement the fine tuning, and it's going to lock experiment runs to Comet ML. So it's going to lock uh, fine tuning metrics 
and also the final model with a fine-tuned weight. That's our model. That's the, our fine-tuned model uh, for our custom data set that we're going to later uh, deploy. But that's something we're going to see in a few lectures. So this thing takes a while. I'm going to stop the video. If you have any problem, just let us know. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. And man, I really like what you cook. See you soon, guys.